Morning, Monty. Morning. Friggin' cold. In it. One moment, please. But you're not belly aching about the cold now, are ya? Hello everybody! Bit of an odd one today. Mark 5 Mondeo, 2 litre diesel, 6 speed manual transmission. I removed this gearbox about 2 weeks ago. It's making a rumbling noise, like a really bad bearing noise. Put it this way, I got in the car when the driver pulled up, I got in the car and I drove it across the yard here in first and second gears and it was like It was really like a real bad bearing noise. And as I was rolling on the, across the yard, I dipped the clutch and the noise completely went. That says to me, it's not a wheel bearing, it's not a drive shaft and it's not a diff bearing. It is on the actual gear train itself somewhere, one of them bearings. This is unusual because on these particular gearboxes, normally when they come in, they're either jumping out of first gear or crunching in second or third, usually where the synchro hub teeth get stripped. So this is a bit of a different one. And in fact, in all the years I've been dealing with these Mondeos, this is only the second gearbox that I've actually had bearing noise on. The first one I never took apart, it got given to the bloody scrap man. So this one, I'm going to take it apart and have a look. I'm quite interested to see what's gone in it. I checked the oil level before I removed the gearbox and it was full of oil. And the oil that came out of it looked okay to be honest with you. Looked a bit old because it had probably been in there a long time. But it didn't look bad. It wasn't covered in metal. It wasn't sparkly or nothing. So it wasn't oil that's the problem. So I'm going to take it apart now and have a quick look and see if it's repairable or not. Let's do it. Safety first. What I'll do to start with, I will remove this clutch release bearing and I'll turn that shaft. It's just with the bearing on the shaft, it's hard to actually get your hand on it properly to spin it. So I'll get these three eight mils out of the way and remove that. The gearbox is in neutral at the moment, so I'll just spin this. Yeah, that's noisy. It doesn't sound too clever. I'll pop it into one of the forward gears and now spin it. Hard to tell, but whatever it sounds, it sounds like there's a noise coming from the back end here. Anyway, let's start taking this apart. The actual gear selector mechanism I shall remove first. It's only like four 10 mil bolts. And usually, with a little tap, the whole, it, the whole mechanism should lift straight out, as long as it's in neutral. There, Oh, oh, look at that. There's a lot of metal on there. Oh dear. <laughs> that doesn't look good. By the way, that little sensor just here, just below your select mechanism, that is at what tells the car's computer what gear you're in, so it can tell you when to shift up or when to shift down. And yeah, this piece being a magnet on your selector shaft, oh dear. <laughs> so, uh, Whatever's gone wrong inside this gearbox has certainly shed some metal filings. There are four 10 mil bolts inside this bell housing. So I'm going to whack them out of the air gun. Save time. There. Come on. Heavy. 
There's a little plate in the top of the gearbox that holds one of the bearings in. There's three 10 mils there. So I'll whack these out first. <laughs> Now, just a case of going all the way around the outside of the bell housing and whacking all the bolts out. Now that all the bolts are out, we've just got to separate the casing. They can be quite stuck on, so it may take a little while. Tell by the, the change of the note when I'm hitting it with the hammer that something's coming apart. Yep, it's definitely moving. She's a little bit tight, Captain. <laughs> Come on. There we go. She's off. Ta ra. Well, having a quick look around the bearings, that one feels okay. It even looks all right. Same with the back one. All the bearing outer races in the end casing, they look good. No metal or swarf in there. Our magnet. <laughs> oh my God, look at the state of that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's certainly picked up a lot of metal. Where the hell has it come from? Well, I shan't keep you in suspense any longer. It's this one here. Number one, the one with the little plate where the three bolts go in and hold it. This bearing, can you see, it's actually, I can lift it like that, it's tipping. The whole bearing is actually tipping. And if I, if I turn it like that, it feels rough. That, Nasty. Listen to that. I know that plate's not helping, but I, when I feel it, when I turn the bearing in my hand, it feels rough as hell. So there we go. That is our problem. And the amount of tip that bearing's got. So what I'm going to have to do is get this gear shaft out and try and remove this bearing. Right, there's an eight mil bolt here, which is pretty damn bloody tight, so I'm gonna air gun it out. Eight mil Allen key bolt, normal thread. There, flipping tight. I've just made a phone call to TC Harrison, our Ford dealer, and this particular bearing, it comes with this bracket as well. So obviously, it's gonna be hard to get it off, so you're probably gonna destroy this bracket trying to remove it. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the shaft out of the gearbox altogether and put it in the vise. So, these actual gear chain shafts just lift out like so. And then the selectors should just come straight off. ta -da. And by the way, if you're ever doing something like this and you don't want to forget how things go back together, it always helps to take photos of how things were to start with. That way you can always go back if you're not sure how they sort of like fit back together. Okay, I shall remove this gear chain shaft. Whee, steady. there. This is where the fun and games begin. This is your input shaft. I believe you've actually got to tip the other gears out of the way so you can slide this one out. Easier said than bloody done. <laughs> but I shall have a go. Oh, nope, it's come out. There we are. That was easy. I feel I should take the rest of the gear shafts out and just check the bearings in the bottom. I'm sure they're perfectly fine, but uh, it's worth having a check anyway. Come on. 
Ah, there's one. Just as I thought, these bearings are absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong with them whatsoever. They'd have gone all bronzy and pitted to hell if they were worn out. That's good. I know the diff bearings are perfectly fine because like I say, when I dipped the clutch, when I was still rolling, the noise went, which eliminated the diff bearings altogether anyway. But seeing as we're here, I'm gonna to have to clean all this out anyway, get rid of all the swarf. So I shall lift the differential unit out. So yeah, all the bearing races that I can see in here, they're all nice and clean and shiny and silver as they're supposed to be. They'd go all bronzy if they were worn out. But like I say, these gearboxes are not prone to bearing failure. So I'm actually surprised. Mind you, that bearing is the first time I've had that particular bearing go in all these years. So uh, at least it's repairable. I shall get all this old oil cleaned out, get rid of all the old swarf and metal, so it's all spotless again, ready to put it all back together. All nice and clean again. Right, I shall pop this back in, nice and gently. Okay, before I pop this gear shaft back in, this is the one with first and second gear, third and fourth gear. This is the one that normally where you get crunching in the gears. I took one of these apart and stripped this gear shaft down to change first gear, second gear, and first and second synchro hub. If you want to see that, you can see that up here somewhere. Anyway, I shall bang this back in the box now. Right, let's slot this one on. You just got to be a little bit careful sliding these back in so you don't damage anything. There, beautiful. Right, well here's our new bearing. The actual bracket is part of the bearing, it's fixed onto it. So that's handy, because I was worried about that. I was thinking I'm going to destroy the bracket trying to get the old bearing off. So uh, that's good. Right, the only problem is now getting the old bearing off. I've been heating this up with a hot air gun for about five minutes now, and I really shouldn't be shoving a screwdriver in there because I don't want to break the teeth, but I'm being very careful. But I have found that it has actually moved. So I was going to actually get my angle grinder and actually chop the bearing off. But I'd rather not do that if I can help it. So, uh, but now I know that putting some heat on here, it actually is moving. If I'm careful, I can keep working it up bit by bit until I get it off. It's absolutely amazing what a little bit of heat can do. I've got a pair of lever bars, that's coming off. It is literally, <laughs> literally there. Just a tiny bit more. Yeah! <laughs> Zooming in. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to touch that somehow. It's probably quite hot. Mind you, it might not be too hot here. Oh, it is a bit warm. Yeah. Well, at least I got it off in one piece. Well, it's good news that bearing's come off. And the better news is I haven't cracked any teeth trying to prise it off. You've got to be careful when you put a lever through here because it's ever so easy to crack these teeth. So we've been lucky here. Right, anyway. Let's try and get the new bearing fitted on. Okay, now, as this wasn't actually that tight coming off, I could, I mean, I've got a hydraulic press next door, which I could use to press this back on, but I'm kind of thinking it might just go back on with a few light taps. That's it. Lovely. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> okay, I shall pop this back in. So if my calculations are correct, I just have to tip these other two gear just a little bit 
and that should slide back in nicely. Bingo, we're in. Right, we'll just stick our selector forks back in place. And I'll slide the bar through. That's it. Right, now we'll pop the next set of forks in. And this bracket here, from that bearing, you line it up with that fork and then slide your bar through. Done. You'll know that your selector forks are in the correct position because they'll all line up. And when you can slide the selector mechanism here, like that, that'll all slot in. You see you've got two little tabs here and they'll slot in just like that. And everything will line up perfectly. Now we have clean threads on our locking bolt. I will pop a little bit of Loctite there. Done. I reckon we should cut this open and have a better look at it. Safety first! Oh, well, we can certainly say this bearing's not any good for anything now. <laughs> it's all fallen to pieces. Well, that certainly concludes it. You see how pity that inner race is? And believe me, this is actually the first bearing I have had that has been knocked out on one of these gearboxes. Flipping heck, even the, even the ball bearings are like pit to hell, absolutely rough. Oops, it's gone. Well, what can I say? At least it's rebuildable. That bearing cost 40 pound plus VAT. I don't think that was too bad. There again, to actually have the gearbox taken out of the car, stripped down and the bearing replaced, is gonna cost you a goddamn sight more. But there again, it may well be cheaper than buying a new gearbox. And like I say, from 2015 until now, 2022, this is only the second gearbox I've had in one of these cabs that have actually had a bearing noise. And the first gearbox that we took out because it was making a noise similar to this one, we left it and we never got around to taking it apart and the scrap man got it in the end. So I never, I never did find out what was wrong with it. But this one, I thought I'm going to make a point of taking this one apart. And now I've done it, and it turned out to be a £40 bloody bearing. And of course, because I know how these gearboxes come apart, it's like, no problem, easy. So uh, I shall put this back together. I shan't show you putting it back together, because it's like, the casing just goes on. You put a bead of sealant around where the two casings go together, bolt it all up. That's probably about it. So, plus clean the magnets up and clean your selector part up where all the metal's been stuck to the magnets. So as long as everything's nice and clean, then put some new oil in it when it's back in the car. But yeah, I just wanted to do this video to see what had gone inside that box because bearings don't seem to be a problem on these cars as far as I know. Anyway, <clears throat> that's it. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching everybody. See you all in the next one. Oh, one last thing, check this out. This taxi broke down. It lost all of its drive, wasn't going anywhere. You put it in any gear, it wouldn't move. Almost like the clutch center plate was completely burnt out. When we got it back here, with the engine running, the flywheel was rattling like a bastard, okay? So we thought, ah, 
maybe he's, do he's done the clutch or the flywheel's completely broke or something, but hey no. As I started taking it apart, I've already put a new clutch and flywheel in this, but when I was taking it apart, I undone this drive shaft on the driver's side, and guess what? Oh! <laughs> oh I, this is the first time we've ever had a drive shaft completely snap there look at that mind you when you think about it that's a hollow pipe so we still must have taken some flipping force to actually snap that so uh yeah new drive shaft required so yeah nice one right anyway that's it have a good one see you in the next one adios